Hello and welcome to the Your Revolution podcast. The Your Revolution podcast is a collaboration between Revolution Personal and Performance Training in Melbourne and the Me Project. The purpose of the Your Revolution podcast is to inspire you on your mission of betterment. Each week on the podcast, you'll meet game changers who have created extraordinary lives, and you'll listen to stories and lessons to empower you to make the changes necessary to your life. The Your Revolution podcast is committed to fitness, health, nutrition, mindset, community, education, empowerment, and betterment, and we hope that you can take what you learn here and apply it to your very own revolution. Thanks for tuning in to this episode 103 of the All Revolution podcast with me, Greg Corpanitas. Today we are with Lars Nilsson at Middle Park Fitness off Armstrong Street, Middle Park in Melbourne's inner suburb south of Melbourne. Lars is my go-to man for recovery work and someone who has been featured within Revolution Personal Training in our May edition of our blog, which you can find on our website under the blog section. On to the man himself. Lars is a soft tissue therapist, fitness trainer, owner, and originator of the Lars Ice Bath Practice in Melbourne. He is a large advocate of alternative medicine and helping people through the power of nature and natural remedies. I have worked closely with Lars this year, particularly through his unique ice bath practice, where he uses a combination of breathing exercises blended in with cold immersion therapy, helping to create a well-balanced body and mind. I felt the breathing work in particular really helped me enter a state of mind which I could control and and even the ice bath experience and also uncontrollably stopping me uh, wanting to jump out of the huge tub of ice. From my own experience, I found his session super beneficial to my recovery from training and enabling me to train harder and more efficiently. The breathing component was particularly something I'd never done before and since this episode, I've tried to incorporate into my daily routine. I truly believe this is a must-try recovery method, but only if you're game enough. Uh, on to the podcast episode itself. It was an absolute pleasure to have Lars on the program, sharing his journey through health and fitness. And one thing that really stood out for me was his passion and dedication to help inspire individuals to be better versions of, of themselves. Through his work as a therapist, he has aligned himself with multiple organizations, including workplaces, gyms, and charities, which I think is very noble of him. So without further ado, let's bring Lars on and I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, thanks for tuning in to episode 103 where I am joined by Lars Nilsson, AKA the Ice Viking. Thank Welcome you. to the All Revolution podcast. Thank you very much. No, fantastic, great to have you on here. Now look, our Lars Ice Bath is real familiar territory for Revolution Personal Training. As you may have seen myself or some other trainers in our gym running half naked around Armstrong Street in Middle Park. So <laughs> here we are with, yes, the one and only Lars himself. So if you want to read about that article, uh, I believe it was in our May edition on our website. And that could be found in our blog. But uh, look, as we always do, let's just kick things off to give, could you give us an audience a bit of an insight into who you are? Who oh, I am? Yes, who you are, a bit of an well, introduction. I'm an old guy and I'm feeling pretty good what I do. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, what do you want to know, where I'm coming from or where I'm born or what are we doing? Yeah, the whole, whole yeah, right. who so, you are. Yeah, I was born in Sweden and grew up in sort of north of Sweden and there uh, was actually well, very early involved with cold and uh, mm-hmm. cold, you know, ice and everything like that. I can imagine. Skied a lot and did all that stuff. So, yep. and then uh, through, the, through the years, with my sports was probably moved. I played a lot of ice hockey okay. and a bit of martial arts and stuff like that. Sure. And uh, also got into uh, massages very early because I, I felt, well, I had my teammates and I fixed them and so on so all that came very early too in my, my time and uh, uh, yeah so uh, and then uh, I went through school and so on did all that jazz and mm-hmm. and then uh, when I uh, went uh, through school and that and then we uh, 
I uh, got into my own business quite early. I had a gym when I was really young with my with my mate. We were probably just about 16 or 18. Okay, yeah, very young. Weights in those days was really hard to get, so yep. there was not many gyms left. So we started very early like that. There was good training when we played hockey and stuff mm. like that. Sure. So uh, yeah, we did uh, all that, and then I had my own business for a uh, few years doing that, and I had a couple of got into the restaurant business a bit and did that kind of stuff too. Okay, a bit of hospitality. Yeah, hospitality yeah. and that, a couple of cafes. Yep. And then uh, one day my mate came in and he asked, said he's going to go to Australia. Mm. And he asked me if I want to come and I'm going, eh, that sounds pretty good actually. So uh, how, yeah. how much time have I got? And it's uh, about a month. <laughs> okay. I'm going, okay, I'll try my best. And yeah. a month later we were away. And here we are. We took off and went to Australia. Yeah, and yeah. haven't looked back since? No, nah, nah, it's been good. There you go. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so yeah. safe to say that I guess your passion is for health and fitness came at a pretty young uh, age. It was, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Always been there. Yeah. Always want to help people, you know. That's why I got into that kind of industry, I think. You know, mm-hmm. get fit. Uh, we didn't have much to go with in those days like it is now. You yeah. Know? It's a gym on every corner, like you have a pub on every corner in Australia, I reckon. Mm. So, yeah, so, yeah, I've been there basically all my life and done it. And try to update with things so you're not standing still. So stagnant, yeah. That's right, go yeah. with it, you know, and study reading a lot. And, sure. And uh, be updated, so uh, yeah. there's so much stuff now. And, you know, then I try to do my own combination. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so on so yeah that's okay good. yeah well, that's very interesting because uh mm. even myself i mean i then i got into massage i guess yeah. through the benefits for myself but yeah, also yeah. kind of at a young age yeah we in sporting clubs yeah. and it yeah. kind of developed into a profession for, for myself sure. so for sure. yeah, yeah but i imagine obviously back when you were doing it would have been as you sort of said, a lot of it was sort of, you were just learning on the road. It wasn't the, sort of the resources that we have now in no. terms of. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, you gotta got, get all of information. Yeah. Most of the stuff you probably get through books and, and back from America and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, we developed a lot of stuff that way because we had to create things mm-hmm. ourselves, yeah. Okay. All right, well, I guess fast forwarding a little bit as, mm-hmm. so if you had the month's notice, you, you've come to Australia. Yeah. Uh, was Australia, did you actually have any expectations of Australia? Uh, yeah, I knew a bit about Australia. There was, you know, a lot of kangaroos and stuff and surfing and that. So me and my mate, we just went on a tour, we bought a car and got yeah. a couple of surfboards and we just toured around Australia and had a great time, you know. So mm. there was mostly to explore and what a wonderful country it was, and mm. uh, yeah, the opportunities to do things. Yeah. Mm. Did you think it would be home? Uh, not in that stage, because we travelled through Asia, and we did through New Zealand and that, but maybe one day yeah. it's going to be here where I live, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had those sort of sites, yeah. Okay, so you obviously have ever travelled through Australia. Mm. How long, when was it that you decided that Melbourne was where you wanted to base yourself? I... I came to Melbourne then, but then I came back 1996 to Melbourne. Okay. And, you know, I really, we came around springtime and, and I, I lived in the tropics a lot and done a lot of stuff, but I just felt Melbourne was the climate was best for me yep. to be able to, you know, take a coat on in the winter and you sure. have the changes and that. Absolutely. So yeah. I have a, that's been my home since then. And, Four so seasons here, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I lived here since '96 now. Okay. Yeah, so I've been here for quite a long time and create yeah. a lot of good business, and yeah, it's cool. Sure. No, no, absolutely. Now, uh, I guess one one thing I've sort of discovered with you is that you, I suppose, you were a very big advocate for sort of alternative medicine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, can you explain why you believe it is beneficial to all? Well, I think you know. I always love the nature, and I think a lot comes from the nature, and uh, and uh, drugs and medication. It's, uh, I've seen a lot of stuff happen to people if they're on it for a long time, and 
Uh, in these days it's better because it's just uh, the new generation of doctors actually work with complementary medicine a bit better. Mm. But for me it's always been this the last resort. And I understand, it's, I have nothing sort of against it, but sometimes I think it's a bit misused yep. using it too much. And it's a lot of opportunities out there to be able to use actually natural stuff. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to combine it yeah. to get the best uh, Response. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. And so, was that discovered? Um, did you discover that for yourself, you oh, personally, my, or was that through your own practice? Through my practice, I always also, and, and for myself, because I always live there anyway. Eat healthy. You know, it sounds like I'm an old guy here when I said in those days we had everything organic. Today, is, everything is special organic. Yeah. Because we have we have uh, basically poisoned so much in our. The soils and that and with food and how we make food in these days mm. so yeah always eat well and yeah. thought that whatever you put in is what you get out in life too it's important sure. to have a good balance no that's Without well said totally be a health freak you've got to live too yeah to no, absolutely fun. well said well said now since you're a big advocate for cold immersion therapy mm. can you explain uh, for those listening what what it is I think uh, because I was exposed to it very early, mm. I could see the beneficial thing with it, you know. Even our dad was probably a bit cruel when he kicked us out in our diapers when we were little. To, he, you know, why did he do that? We found later it was that our immune system, we, got, we never got sick. We're yeah. never sick and he conditioned us for it to mm. stay good and healthy. Stay out in the cold. Out in the cold and even when we, the mom had a prone, prone and we walk around with us, they left us out for two, three hours and sleep outside, there was 20. Really? We had a little blanket and that on. We're still warm, you know. Wow. And that's a tradition up where I'm from, Russia and Ukraine and those places that do that. Yeah. And whole Scandinavia basically, yeah. Oh, fascinating, yeah, okay. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we certainly didn't do that. <laughs> no, 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 so, so there was a very I think thing. And a hot water bottle and a blanket. Yeah, and, was, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, that mm. always teach us about cold showers and that, so mm. through my whole life I had cold showers, plus other things I run into to yeah. even more find the benefit, benefit things to, to do it, you know. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you were exposed this mm -hmm. very young age. Mm -hmm. You always mm -hmm. believed in the benefits. Yeah, and... yeah. Okay, no, they're very good. Now, um, I suppose uh, one of the, I suppose another guy, another guy who's a very big uh, advocate of this is Wim Hof himself. Oh, Wim, yeah, yeah, he's, Wim. He's the main, he's the he's he's the king and the god for everybody when it comes mm -hmm. to coal. Can you talk about how you met Wim and? Uh, well. I remember those old documentaries, I follow him quite a bit and saw those in the days when he walks around and do all these things, people thought he was crazy and, and then uh, about three years ago, three and a half, uh, I heard he's going to come to Australia and uh, I was lucky to come into this retreat and meet him and uh, all the new stuff he, he showed us and with the breeding and you know, how to actually handle ice baths, real ice baths. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was really amazing. And I, especially when he showed us the breathing the first time and how he can alkaline the body and all that. And I mm -hmm. thought that was something special. That was really amazing. That was something you'd never that seen. That was before. really amazing. That was really, you know, and then you can come by that. And, and uh, you know, they always he said, you know, uh, go out and help people. Just let them know about this. Mm. And uh, yeah, we took through the course and got invited to help out with a bit more. So yeah, that was a really amazing time mm. to be able to meet him, you know, mm. and hope to be able to meet, work with him in the future too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I suppose, what was the, um, I mean, I guess you kind of touched, but I guess what was the biggest thing, I suppose, you learnt from him? Yeah, I think there was that, uh, I think the, 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 the breeding and the, you know, the way, uh, you can help people with, uh, we have so much depression and we have anxiety in people today, a yeah. lot of health problems yeah, and use that technique and also what I do is I change a lot of things and do a lot of research on myself before I do uh, regarding different breeding and I think any breeding technique is good 
Mm. But the problem we have, we don't breathe properly, and no one does, you know what I mean? So, yeah. if we could get that right and help people, yeah, I think that, that was the, that was the, and then the combination of ice mm. and, and breathing. And uh, yeah, that, that was probably those two mm-hmm. biggest things. Now, obviously, you knew obviously about the benefits of cold therapy. Mm-hmm. You grew up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. But yeah. I suppose was the breathing the missing link? Was about when you learned the breathing. When, did you find that once you understood? Yeah, I did. I, I, I did. Point, you were able to bring those two. Yeah, I did breathing techniques before, but did they just that kind of way to breathe together with cold? Yeah. And then I think, yeah, that, that was probably the missing link. Yeah. yeah. I think that was it's, it's, it's a really important thing. Yeah. 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 No. Okay. That's a great point. Now, uh, would you be able to, I guess, touch on, I suppose, for the mints, because most people would think, okay, I'm going to jump in some cold water or an ice bath. It's pretty daunting. Mm. You know, we're, we're winter now. Mm. Um, what would you say, I suppose, the, the benefits are to, I guess, ice baths and... Yeah, I suppose, can you also touch on your own experience, what you took away from it, you take away from it in your, because under, my understanding is that you do them daily, you do ice baths? I, yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. daily, that's my start in the morning to do, you know, my breathing, and uh, I'm not having a 10 minutes ice bath in the morning, but between 3 to 5, I think that's a great start for me to do, yep. uh, if it's good for everybody to do it, but... I did a lot of research when I came back from the first retreat and I, I did 35 days and I had 10 minutes every day and stopped training and I want to see where I'm at, had a good blood test and see where my levels were and so on. 10 minutes in the ice? 10 minutes in the ice every day and did, and did the breathing and uh, I, I had a lot of pains and stuff everywhere yeah. and after 12 days basically I got rid of all that because it's... The bad inflammation, I think, you really reduce mm. when you do a lot of ice baths and breathing. Yeah, it really helps you out the new immune system mm-hmm. and uh, like mental health. You know, mm. uh, with uh, as I said before, depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. uh, better blood flow, uh, you know, growth hormones, testosterone. Mm. So so many things it's covered, and I after that I thought now I'm gonna now I'm gonna start to put something together mm. and really start to combine this with things, you know, not just that I do I done heavy duty massages for a very long time, yep. so I don't start to combine. So I started to do that together with breathing, mm. and then I added ice bath after that. I had done that work and saw the beneficial thing for that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Just the recovery from an ice bath as an athlete as or a personal trains. It's yeah. it's 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 amazing mm-hmm. how much quicker you you, you can recover you from. Recover. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you do the breathing, you actually can recover more quicker afterwards. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. And so you yeah. So you obviously you saw these benefits very quickly on yourself. Yeah. So you did this 30, 35 days. Yeah. Um, and you saw not just how you felt, but to physically, but also mentally. You mentally. Said, yeah, everything. Everything. It's just, there was just a good, each day has got better and better and better. Mm. And I, you know, and then I thought, you know, should I really do that? This, another day and another day, but I thought, for, you know, after 35 days, I had some data about what things, what I actually have changed in me. Yeah. And I had something to go on, but yeah, a bit of cold every day. Yeah, yeah cold, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pain away. Nothing wrong with that. And yeah. You feel good, then you research yourself for the day, you know. Yeah, obviously you tried and tested. So yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I suppose, what advice would you give to someone that wanted to try this? That I suppose that were a bit. Well, I think you know, try it on a really bad day because it can't get worse when you have it. If it's snowing outside and raining, just try it on that day. Yeah. But also, uh, you know, I think when you're gonna get used to cold and have a bit of problem. You can just do it a little bit every day, maybe, yeah? 10 seconds longer every day to come up. We recommend three to five minutes a day, two showers a day like that. Mm. And then uh, gradually do that. And even before you come for an ice bath, you can just, if you do your breathing in a cold shower after, Mm. just just slowly get used to it, you know? If you can take it quicker, because in an ice bath, the first two minutes is always the critical one. Yes. And it will always feel like it. I can, doesn't matter how I many can vouch, times you I can do vouch it. for that. I'll tell you the it's first. Just, it's yeah. just, 
these things, but then after that, your body kind of start adjusting to it, mm. and you start, and then, you know, there's so many other things later on you can do, you can combine that with meditation, mm. with certain music, uh, all kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And even, so let's say even if like, okay, then you want to do an ice bath, a cold shower is more than, you can easily do a cold shower, don't you? Yeah. It doesn't have to be just with an ice bath. No, 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 cold yeah. showers is good. Just yeah. as effective. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, if people are looking for something to uh, lose weight, mm. you know, you, you're burning fat 300 times faster in an ice bath, so you can mm. figure out the rest. That yeah. will be the thing, and I, I remember when I did it, after 12 days I lost 3 kilo of body fat, but no muscle mass really. So, no, there so was the muscle mass made. didn't change? No, that didn't. But, so, but yeah. all that fat you can burn. It's mm. just, yeah, it's just, because, uh, and you're hungry man, <laughs> you eat. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. eat, you just love it. In, in Eno you can eat what you want, and how much, because you don't really put on anyway. Yeah, no, sure. Yeah. And this is so obviously, so you run this mm. all your clients, uh, yeah, so lately I've started with those things, so as I said with massages, but I also have started to do workouts, maybe 30 to 40 minutes mm. workouts, and then I put in a breathing session between to let the body come down, mm -hmm. and then uh, we do a uh, three to five minutes ice bath after we have done mm. the, uh, the workout and that. So I've got two, three different groups who does that two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yeah, man, uh, it, they, 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 the progress on them has been amazing. Yeah. Something to recommend. And it's, still, it's all mind over matter, you know. It's a very unique approach. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's cold down there, it's dark, it's 5.45, 6.30 when somebody's going to go in the ice bath down there. Yeah. And now we see the, now spring is on the way because it's lighter, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And that just picks people up. It's just, yeah. it's, it's amazing. No, no, fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. Now, I suppose on your journey through health and fitness, what would you say, I suppose, has been I guess, the biggest challenge, if not, if there has, has been any, I suppose, going through your career so far, or? Uh, challenge, in which way you mean challenge? Uh, could be any, anything, really, yeah. I suppose. I, I, I think it's, uh, it's always challenges and that, but, uh, I mean, since I, I think that with meditation and breathing have helped me a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. And meditation I did long time for, mm -hmm. and even yoga and things like that. And, uh, and, and uh, I think it's all about a bit of balance, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't overdo things. Too many people overtraining these days. Yeah. I think they train too much. Like people in my age, they train four, six times a week, an mm -hmm. hour a day. You can never recover. Yeah. So, uh, no, I think it's been pretty good, actually. Yeah. Mm. So, you say, so, would you say at one stage that was probably that you felt like you were overdoing things at one point? Or yeah, I learned from it. You, you learned, so you yeah, learned, always. Yeah. We've all done it. And, you know, and I learned yeah. and that's what I then, you know, you, you're running into issues and stuff like that. And mm. then, but there was a good way to learn then for later, like now, be able to teach people those things and try yeah. to do do it the right way. Sure. No, no, of or course. Better. Ab absolutely. Now, I suppose at present time right now, can you talk about, I guess, some of the projects or, I guess, some organizations or people that you're currently been involved in with your ice bath work? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I've been, uh, I've done a, f a few different uh, um, sort of uh, a retreat with um, Island of Man in Australia. We did just a little while back and I'm involved with them now mm -hmm. and uh, that's all about men's health yep. so uh, I'm, which is an amazing thing and and they uh, and then uh, so I come in as a little facilitator and do my breathing and that mm. and hopefully for the next one we're gonna do ice bath uh, I also do like to do charity you know do working on do different charities for uh, young people, yeah, yeah, kids who is in trouble and uh, yeah. you know, it's just a lot of them who, who needs your help because they don't have a, even a home to be in. No. Parents who is fighting and it's always a problem, they get lost, they get into drugs and things mm. like that. Uh, then we have people in disaster zones like long time back Chernobyl happened, there's still people that yeah. be, which is on Netflix at the moment and yeah. people come and talk about it. I remember I grew up 
uh, under that time back home when that happened. Mm. And uh, I got a very good friend who also saw, uh, now we're going to do a little bit of business together with yeah. uh, uh, Roman Koshev and he has, he's the only the man I met who was actually born in, mm. in Chernobyl and, and actually yeah. grew up there and left. So that, that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that kind of stuff I like to do. Mm. A bit of charity for people in that, yeah. and, and different organisation, work with younger people, and men's health. And so, yeah, yeah no, so now this, um, mm -hmm. I suppose your passion for it, did this develop, has this always been something you've been really passionate about working in? As well as your, as yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I always dare to help people, and mm. uh, it's, you see a lot of people are in trouble, sometimes they don't really need to be that. So you try to just do the best for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't have much money, you try to work with them so mm. they can get some start in life, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, yeah. I like that. Well, I know very recently, you, know, you, you, you touched on before, you with the Islands of, Islands of Men. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, can you talk about that retreat? Because uh, that seemed like it was very special. It was well, well over a couple of hundred people. It was, sort of uh, it was about 160, 170 people and yeah. it, it went for 12 hours. It was a very long day and we, we had Dif different facilities there who did different things yeah. and you know with uh, uh, they, they were like warrior and tribes and uh, mm. we did a lot of uh, heart meditation and uh, there was so many different ways we were healing and uh, mm. uh, yeah we that was an amazing day I learned a lot from that was my first one to be kind of involved with so oh, yeah. yeah so I found that that's something we really grow and there's a lot of men with problems out there mm. who needs this kind of help so I highly recommend mm -hmm. to get in touch with some organization it's smaller of them small different organizations out there yeah. in every state in Australia so it's just to go on the internet and Google it and find it yeah no no I yeah. could not agree yeah. more it's um mm. it's something that you know it's mm. always I feel like it's just become mainstream now is men's mental health it just yeah. seems like just not there's not enough done and um, it's great to see so. that there yeah. are organisations And like get men to open up a bit, you know? Having conversations, yeah, opening up. And, uh, you know, it's not all to be tough. You, we all have feeling and emotional stuff sitting in our self. We need to release and just feel mm. the goodness about it. Mm. No, no, it's great to know that there's, mm. there is support mm. out there mm. for those. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, I suppose, what I suppose is the biggest thing that you've taken away from your, I suppose, your health and fitness journey or career? Uh, I think it's just, uh, for me, it's how I can see the little I do, I can do, see how I can you know, help people and see them changing. Yeah. It's just that to get, as I said before, to get people back on track, yeah. you know, so they get on with things. Sometimes it's not a big deal really, we make a big deal out of things but mm. and always how I looked at that is that you know if I'm a bit down or something it's always somebody who has a worse than me you know. Yeah. You know so uh, yeah that, that really inspires me to just get nice little messages and say you know you feel great today and so on. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's very well said, very well said. Uh, now. A little bit of a curveball of a question here. Okay. We always like to throw everyone every now and then, okay. but I suppose if you were in my shoes, yeah. uh, what would you have asked yourself that I didn't? Uh, <laughs> well, it's usually a good thing if you don't have it. <laughs> I don't know, you didn't do anything. I think you did good. Yeah? Yeah, you did good. Okay, that's, yeah. that's good. Okay. That's good. Now, uh, I suppose if, uh, for listeners, uh, if they want to obviously find out more about Lars Ice Bar yeah. uh, or more about you and your, where where can they find you? So I'm I'm hanging in Middle Park in uh, in uh, on Armstrong Street, Middle Park. Yep. And uh, it's a it's a fitness gym that called Middle Middle Park Fitness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also getting a. Uh, I have a Facebook page, Lars Icebath, yep. and Lars Icebath International, mm -hmm. which is a group where you can join up and uh, we'll see where all the events is. And soon we also start up uh, women's uh, breeding and ice baths, and we have one for men yep. coming up too. 
and uh, a little bit of charity coming along too, charity groups we're going to do, mm -hmm. and uh, got a website coming called lasasbath.com. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, look on those sites, and uh, I'm on in, uh, also on Instagram, yep. which is also Lars Asbath. Lars Asbath. It's easy to remember all those things. Yep. You can see what I do is pictures and stories, mm -hmm. and yeah, please feel free. Uh, if you, you know, you can subscribe with your email sure. and you get a letter. Get so the on. updates. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, well that was actually, a, that's kind of a good segue into my next question. No. Is, um, I suppose your, your future work, what's in store, but it sounds like you have a few things, like you said, you mentioned, you just continually working for mm. charities, mm. Uh, men's only, women's only, breeding right. sessions. And also I want to do events for like gyms and you know, I can I come around do a breathing session, an ice bath, like you know, a workshop. Yeah, end of the week. Yeah, a little bit like that. Mostly two, three hours little shop that we can do. Yeah, I want to do events. Mm. I've done uh, two big boxing events. Yep. Uh, last month we mm. did, and you helped me. Yeah, I was happy. That was great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. That was fantastic. And so all those uh, anyone who's out there and want that, I got the service for it. I got the cold eyes mm -hmm. and I got all those things you need. So please yeah, yeah. get on those uh, sites and just let me know. Perfect. Done. Oh, good. Now, I suppose the last bit, as we always like to close off here, is our rapid fire revolution mm -hmm. signature 20 questions. Mm -hmm. So these are pretty much going to require short word answers. Yep. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay, question number one. Hot showers or cold showers? Uh, hot showers, cold showers, you can do both, or cold showers. So you prefer a cold shower? No, cold showers, yeah sure, cold showers. Good, that's what we want, rapid fire. Hot baths or ice baths? Ice baths. Yeah, easy, there we go. Summer or winter? Winter. Yeah. Barbells or kettlebells? Kettlebells. Good man. Uh, three things that you can't live without? Food, yep. uh, beautiful women, and a lot of love. Oh, love it. Uh, favorite sports team? Uh, a Hawthorne football club. Oh, okay. Uh, most annoying habit? Eating too much. Yeah, I have that too. <laughs> uh, favorite movie? Uh, Down the Wall. Okay. I haven't actually seen that, so that's a good one to always know. Favorite song? Ice baby, ice. Baby, ice baby. Hey, very good. <laughs> Uh, question 10. Burgers or tacos? Tacos. Oh, nice. Uh, question 11. One word to describe you. Unique. No, that was a bit too much. No, very helpful. like to help people. So helpful? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, three things that you would take on a desert island. Food. Uh, <laughs> it's a common denominator here. <laughs> Food and water, yep. and uh, uh, big smile and keep it forever. <laughs> Very good. Uh, question 13, favourite holiday destination? Iceland. Yeah. I actually saw a, um, a good little segment about Iceland. Mm. I didn't realise they had these um, sort of hot pools. It's oh yeah, they got everything up yeah, there. It's the hot springs. Hot, and the, the hot springs, and yeah. They, they, because they're so rich of uh, volcanoes, mm. that water is so healing. It looks amazing. Like another place, Croatia, they you have it the same. It's an amazing. Yeah, so I yeah, just for everyone out there. So all those places. It's on the list. So many of them. Yeah. And it's also home to the Viking clan yeah, as man. well. Uh, Favourite word in English? Ice baths. <laughs> oh, that's mine. We'll take it. Take it. It should be one word. Uh, what is the, okay, this is question 15. What's the best Wi-Fi name you have seen? Oh God, that's difficult. I don't remember anything. Oh, maybe this one, sweat time. Sweat time? Yeah, sweat time. Okay, sweat time it is. Question 16. Uh, do you have any superstitions? And if yes, what are they? No, I don't have any no? superstitions. Okay, very good. Uh, question 17. What makes you bored? To not do anything. 
Be busy. Be busy. Be busy. Yep. Now that seems like a pretty common theme in this whole podcast. Uh, question 19. What is the most ridiculous fact you know? Ridiculous what? Ridiculous fact that you know. Something you can share to us, something that you know that we don't. Um, I feel like he gave us some good facts about ice baths, so we'll take that. Yeah. Okay. We'll take that. Same thing. That was a tough question. It's yeah, a that's tough a tough one. Question. All right, brilliant. Well, yeah. I reckon we'll, uh, we'll call it there. So as I said, uh, this is, like I said, episode 103 of the All Revolution podcast. Uh, if you'd like to find it, you can go to revopt forward slash podcast or subscribe to obviously uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and obviously on the podcast app as well. So thank you, Lars, for your time. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No, you're welcome. Pleasure. Thank you. And signing off. Very good.